of your great surprises stories are coming in at the moment. Loads of good stuff on the show, actually. Just in the next 20 minutes, you're going to hear about the busker from Birmingham who used to, to busk in the city there with his guitar and is now going to be on American TV. It's kind of gone stellar for this guy. So we'll talk to him before 8 o'clock. And a really inspiring story for you here of Wayne Martin from Somerset. Five years ago, Wayne weighed more than 21 stone. He was living on a diet of fast food and alcohol and he had suffered two suspected heart attacks by the time he was just 32 years old. But earlier this month, he was crowned UK body transformation champion. He's on the line now from Minehead, and I can tell you, if you'd like to see pictures of Wayne, because this is a very visual story, check out our Twitter feed and our Facebook page. Just search for BBC Georgie tonight. Then you'll see what he looks like. Here's what he sounds like. Evening, Wayne. Hi, Sim. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. This is an incredible story, then. We heard the before stats there, so you used to weigh 21 stone. What are your stats now? I weigh uh, about 11 and a half stone, so 80 kilos at the moment. Um, so I'm coming back off competition and uh, starting my bulk again. You've you've basically lost half your body weight. You've lost nearly 10 stone there. That's correct. Yeah, just under 10 stone um, over over quite a big period of time. Yeah, it's quite um, it's quite interesting when you look back at some of the clothes I've kept, and uh, you can fit two of me in some of them. <laughs> All right. Well, obvious question, but how how did you do it? Um, I. It really is quite simple. I just uh, cut down the amount of food I was eating. So I, I kept eating the same type of food, but just slowly reduced the portion sizes over a period of time until um, the food was sort of, uh, well, a lot lower, really, the smaller portions, and the weight started dropping off. I also cut out alcohol almost completely, and um, it's surprising what no pints of lager do um, when, uh, when you're not drinking them. The weight just drops off. Wow. I mean, you make it sound simple, but anyone who's tried to lose weight knows it's never that simple because this crazy psychological game we play where if the food's in front of us we kind of want to finish it don't we we do and um especially the the best food always tastes i mean the the, the best food that tastes the best is always the worst for you yeah true um, and it, it was i mean I'm, i am making it uh, sound very simple but it was very very challenging um the, the biggest thing i had to change was my relationship with food and looking at food in a completely different way. So still enjoy it, still enjoy going out and having the occasional treat, but it's retraining that brain to think that it is a treat, it's not something that you need every day. Okay, so on the days when you're not treating yourself then, what's a typical day, diet-wise, for you? At the moment, I'm bulking, so my diet is, uh, it's, this is gonna sound like an enormous amount of food, uh, and it probably is to most people, but my diet's quite boring. It's uh, porridge with water, uh, lots of chicken, Lots of roasted chicken with nothing on it. Lots of uh, sweet potato and mashed potato, um, uh, minced beef, and, and some steaks. At the moment, I'm on about four thousand five hundred calories a day. Well, we should explain then, because people will be thinking, hang on, hang on a minute, how come you're bulking? Because you've, you've just lost a load of weight. So this is to gain muscle, right? You you're a bodybuilder now. I, yes, I am. Strangely, yes. So I, I the competition I had a couple of weeks ago in Margate, I lost. I, I, I sort of shredded my all my body fat off as much as I possibly could, and now I'm in training for the World Championships in October back in Margate in Kent. So the, the plan over the next few months is to try and gain as much muscle as possible, and in order to do that, I need to make sure I've got enough fuel in my body, and, and that comes through food. Is it healthy to lose that much weight and and be in a, uh, an environment where you're you're able to just lose your body fat for a competition and then put it back on again? Um, I think if you do it sensibly and you make sure your relationship with food um, and your psychological state is um, is good that you, you, you don't look at fitness and bodybuilding as the only thing that you do. If you become obsessed by it, then I think it's unhealthy. But if you've got a lot of other things going on in your life, like you know family, time, relationships, work, and other things outside of the gym, then I think it is very healthy because it's um, the food you're putting into your body is all natural, it's all healthy, um, it's all good for you. It's not healthy to stay with uh, no body fat for a long period of time, but it is healthy to put your body through a fairly testing regime, providing you've got those support mechanisms around you. Has it all been plain sailing or were there hitches, were there, were there unexpected hurdles on this amazing transformation? It is the single most challenging thing I have ever done. 
Um, I've described it um, to quite a few people as being on a continuous roller coaster of incredible highs when you're sort of achieving great things at the gym, but really, really deep lows when, uh, particularly when you're shredding the fat off and, and you're really hungry. You, you know, it's quite a hungry game when you're having to go to the gym and still balance those work-life commitments. Um, so it has been enormously difficult. Um, and I said, it's not something for the faint-hearted, which I suppose is why there aren't very many people who compete. We've been talking today about surprises, people organizing surprises or maybe being on the receiving end of, of surprises. It was Theresa May who started it, and we thought, I bet we've got better surprises than a snap general election out there. And we've had some great examples, but I'm imagining that you losing half your body weight must have come as a surprise to people who hadn't seen that, that slow transformation. It, it did. When I, I, I spent quite a bit of time in Australia, and before I left, I was um, massively overweight. When I came back after a few years, um, my mother agreed to meet me at the airport at Heathrow. Um, and I was, she was sort of stood at the gate and I thought I'd just walk past her and walk around the corner. Uh, and I walked past her and she didn't recognize me because I was um, you know, virtually half the person I was when I went. So that was, that was probably quite a nice surprise for her. What was, her, she, what was her reaction when she clocked it was you? It was, she was shocked and I think she was embarrassed that she didn't recognize me. But we, we'd seen each other through Skype quite a bit. Um, but I think when you see somebody face to face, it's, it is quite different. I mean, I lost six inches around my neck and almost 12 inches around my waist, so I really did look very, very different. For pictures of Wayne, you can search BBC Georgie tonight on Twitter or on Facebook. Thank you very much indeed, Wayne Martin. Good luck with uh, the next competition, and thanks for, for sharing that experience with us tonight. No worries. Thank you very much indeed.